Hi, Courtney. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm very happy to have you here today in a short format of course epic called Pastille, which literally means a tablet in English. But it's yeah. also the name of a short format, a video okay. or audio format for Pastille. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's a great chance. Why are you at the moment in California or Colorado or somewhere else? I am back Earth? in Colorado. We got home from California last night and settling back in, going through all the race gear and seeing what we we've even got anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Courtney, today we are going to talk about two hot topics surrounding you, the release of Short Knee, the new um, oversized short by Salomon that you inspired, and your recent victory at uh, Western States. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that sounds great. I'm not going to ask you to do this interview in French, but to start, I would like to know your favorite French word uh, used in the English language. Would it be rendez-vous, baguette, Femme fatale, déjà vu, crème brûlée, ou je ne sais quoi. Oh, oh man. Uh, what about... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, baguettes are delicious, so I'm going to go with that. I've been working on my French, but we uh, can't do the whole podcast in French yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll see. It doesn't matter. That's perfect in English. <laughs> Thanks, Courtney. Uh, I suggest we start that with the release of the Salomon, Salomon sorry, short, short name, which it's complicated to say, Salomon short, short name, <laughs> which is now available in stores and uh, online everywhere. This short is inspired by um, the oversized style that you normally wear while with uh, communal qualities of comfort and performance. Are you satisfied with the result? Is it uh, what you imagine? Yes, I'm so excited that we are able to uh, make this short knee available for everyone. I think people should run in what they're comfortable in and to have this length option and this fit option as a possibility makes it so people can really hone in on their comfort and their uh, length short. So I'm psyched about it. And also perform, as you've yeah. shown us so many times. <laughs> yeah, they're really lightweight. They uh, dry really quickly um, and, yeah, just kind of move with you. So they feel great to run in. Where did the initiative come from? Was it you, Salomon, both of you together? I guess I joined Solomon back in uh, 2017 here in the United States. And right away they were fully supportive of my clothing choices They um, were happy to provide me with, you know, the men's shorts, anything that they had that was longer when I told them this was the fit and the cut of things that I preferred. Um, so they were really supportive that that was where I liked to live in the clothing world right away. Um, and then over the years, realized like, oh, we can make a short that actually fits you much better than our men's versions. Um, because to get the length that I wanted, I was ordering really large sizes in the men's clothing. And so then the waist wouldn't fit as well. And so we were having to always kind of cinch that as tight as possible to um, have it stay on. So uh, they helped with that. And we then have been able to race in basically short knees since like late 2017 early 2018. Francois Dain is on the team and he uh, races in similar shorts. So they already had kind of the, the model for what it could look like to make long shorts that are loose and lightweight. Were you involved in the co-creation of, of this short? And if so, at, at which steps of the production uh, process? I was involved in it and got to give feedback on um, the length that I think we should offer the fit of them. So to make sure they were, you know, loose fitting and not long and tight fitting shorts. Um, and then got to give some feedback along the way of, you know, what should the waistband look like or how should we um, get the logos or the colors on there? What could we do to make this a cool product for people? What is the best thing someone could say to you about this short for you to feel like it's a success? The best thing someone could say about the short for me to feel successful about it was that it made them feel comfortable running. 
great and look great in addition to that. <laughs> yeah, you got to look good to feel good, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. Um, the, the short name shot that you also wore this weekend at the Western States in green, in green. So we could say that it brought you some good luck, as we would hope uh, with this color. Yeah, yeah, they worked great. I was getting doused with water throughout the race and they um, dried so fast and just felt good all day long. So I was very happy to have them out there on the course with me. The proof of concept is validated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Courtney, if you could sum up uh, the last question with one word, what would it be? So Difficult fun. one. So fun. <laughs> it's two words, but actually, <laughs> yeah. but fun is fine. <laughs> you had a lot of fun? I had a lot of fun. The um, course was fun to run on and being back on it again after a four-year break since I had seen those trails was really wonderful. I shared many moments with other runners and crews and volunteers, and I got to visit my pain cave and work really, really hard, which I think is so lucky. And uh, I categorize that as a fun activity. You have um, a very free approach of training. Was it the case again for the Western States preparation? You did not follow a specific plan for that for the race? No plan for training for Western states. Um, just kind of going off of runs I like to do, workouts I like to do, and then definitely tuning into my body and brain every day to see how they were feeling and if I should push harder or ease off and take a rest day or anything in between. And how did you feel when you arrived at the starting line? Could you, your free way of training give you any doubts or uncertainty on your ability to perform as expected? Is there a, like a question mark? Every time I arrive on a starting line, I never feel certain of the day or my training or um, if I'm as ready as I can be. This time I arrived on the start line and I still had no idea, but I had this feeling of just pure excitement to be there and to have the opportunity to run this race. And when you feel that about something going into it, I think it's a good mindset and just a good general attitude to have for a, a good day, usually. Was well, your goal to finish, win, uh, beat the course record or the three at the same time? Do you define several levels of success for each race you take part to? My is there an are... ideal scenario and, uh, and maybe some other that could satisfy you as well? Yeah, my goals are never about time or place in a race. It's always about finishing and making sure that if and when I do finish, I know that I gave it absolutely everything that I had. There's so many things we can't control in a 100-mile race, and one of those is our competitors and their day. So worrying about place is never the top of my mind. And the other is all the factors that could throw a wrench in our own day. So getting attached to a finish time is never my goal either. It's always just to pour myself entirely out on that course and cross the line knowing that was all I had on this day and feel satisfied with that. I forgot the main goal maybe to have fun. You mentioned it. Because yeah. all of this contributes to, to get you in a, in a very pleasant state. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you've seen the, the best and the worst, if you could say worth, here uh, when winning in 2018 at your first participation and also not finishing the race one year later. What has changed for Courtney uh, in four years? The same freshness, I would say. I don't know if it's the right word, uh, but more experience. Is that you came with the same state of mind, but more experimented? experienced? The hope for sure is that I've learned a lot in the four years since my drop in 2019. I think experience pays off huge. So four more years of training, four more years of racing and being in the pain cave and learning about my body and my brain and my mindset, all of the pieces involved in putting together a hundred mile race is huge. Um, I also, since 2019, have incorporated way more strength training and body maintenance work, trying to 
keep my body happy if I'm going to ask it to push so hard. And I think that has paid off as well. Did you define a specific strategy before the, the race? Did you have something in mind that was very uh, well defined? No, Or just no following strategy. the feelings? Following the feelings and not fighting the course, just taking what it gave, taking uh, section by section how I felt. Um, I knew there would be a ton of snow in the first 50 kilometers. And so it was important to not get caught up in rushing through that and just see what those conditions were actually like when I was running them and go off of that. And it went well in the snow. It was fine, yeah. I um, am probably lucky because I live in a place where there is a lot of snow in the winter, so it's not totally foreign to me to run on snow. And I think it was much firmer than I expected. I wasn't sure if we would be sinking in with every single step, but it was actually uh, hard and a little slippery. So you stayed on top and could kind of skate down the hills even. <laughs> You spend some time with uh, Katie Scheid and normally you experience during most of your races is in solitude because of your high level of performance. Was it enjoyable for you to share this adventure with Katie? I said adventure rather than, than race. Her to being so well prepared for the race. Thank you for using the word adventure. It was <laughs> wonderful to spend the first hours with Katie Scheid. She is a wonderful human um, and an incredible athlete and So we got to chat and uh, work together through a lot of that snowy terrain to, um, yeah, just make the start of the race feel like a big day out with friends instead of something serious and uh, like uh, totally focused on, you know, times or finishing. You often reference the pain cave, and you already did it two times, I think, since the beginning of, of our conversation. What, what you learned is that you hope to welcome the pain cave more than to avoid it. How many time, how much time did you spend in that pain cave during the Western? When did I it spent, start? <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of time in the pain cave, <laughs> uh, which is exactly what I want. I always am hoping to arrive at it. I want to push myself so hard that I get the chance to go in the cave and make it bigger. I would say probably at Western States this past weekend, I spent maybe like 40 miles in the pain cave, just chiseling away at it and uh, staying really, really present in the moment, focusing on every step and every second. Yes, 40 miles um, longer than what you experienced in uh, other 100 miles before. The time you spent in the pain cave, is it more than you experienced before? I would say there's no standard amount of time that I spend in it. Some races will start and almost immediately it will require a lot of mental effort and physical exertion and I'll get in that cave really quickly. Um, and then some races, I never arrive at it or I never get the chance to chisel at it. And this one was kind of right there in the middle where almost half of it was spent you know, in that suffering zone of working really, really hard. What ideas, the concepts of phrases come to you to help live well in this pain cave? I think it maybe depends on the situation and the, the place you're at, but what kind of thing do you think of? Uh, usually when I'm in the pain cave, it will either be totally focused on just making the next motion. So thinking about taking one more step another step after that, breathing, you know, swinging my arms, like it becomes very, very uh, pinpoint on just motion. And sometimes I will um, start repeating a mantra or something positive to myself to keep that chisel swinging and keep the pain cave digging going. This time, um, my mantra in there was definitely along the lines of you're fine, this is fine, but it was also like believe. So I kept saying believe to myself, reminding myself that um, staying positive will help me keep moving forward. And I have to believe that 
moving forward is still possible. And do you also connect to the environment? What you said like, is here is uh, internally, but do you also connect to environment and, and enjoy the fact that you are lucky to live this and just to, to take the elements with you as well and, and get uh, strength from them as well? I absolutely try to. We're so lucky running trails that are gorgeous and seeing you know the light change in the sky or the sun start to set. It feels really special. And the smiling faces along the way, I think you can pull energy from the beauty of nature and the energy of the people that are cheering out there. Courtney, you were very quickly ahead of the pace for the course record. Were you aware of this and did it affect your race plan or not at all? I became aware of it um, probably halfway through the race. Uh, but it did not impact what I was doing because it still felt like there was a whole lot of race left and anything could happen. So I was not um, thinking all the way to the finish line or thinking that maybe I had the record. I was focused on just doing each mile as strongly as I could. The Western allows for you to have a pacer for a portion of the race. You choose not to have one. Is there any reason for that? I guess there is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have raced with pacers. I've raced without pacers. I love it both. Um, this time, we chose to go no pacer just to simplify the whole race. It felt like if it was, you know, just me and my feet rolling through every single aid station, it Uh, made it a little more simple to focus on that forward motion. You won the race, as everyone knows, and finished six overall in 15 hours, 29 minutes and 33 seconds and pulverizing or beating the, the previous record by 78 minutes. What are you the most proud of? Uh, I'm not sure it's the record. It's, maybe it's more the, the way you manage your race globally or the pleasure you had running it. Yeah, I think I'm most proud of uh, the way both myself and my crew and, um, you know, our whole team that we had out there was able to do this thing, execute this thing so seamlessly while still focusing on having a whole lot of fun and never taking anything too seriously along the way. If you could, would you change anything about your race? Something that you think you could have improved or done better? I think there's always room for improvement. So um, I'm hoping in the next couple of days to kind of reflect back on the sections of trail and think through, you know, where are the areas where I could focus on for an eventual next time to see if I could improve those sections and chat with my husband about you know, the crew side of it and where is there room for improvement just as a whole team together. Um, but for, for sure, I always think there is room to get better. You're not obliged to answer my next question, but you threw up uh, at the finish line. You are human then. <laughs> <laughs> We know that now. It's a sure fact. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, do, do you see a, a limit on a scratch ranking that women can achieve on a ultra endurance format like 100 miles? Um, I think there's no reason to put a limit on it. We should believe that anything is possible and chase after it because why not? Do you put some particular meaning in that? Or, I mean, it's, it doesn't, it's, it's not that important to consider male or female performance? For me, it's not that important. Um, I am never chasing after places or times or podiums. It's, uh, for me, more important to know that I gave it everything I had that I squeezed as much fun of, out of it as possible and that um, I, you know, got to create memories and moments with people along the way. Courtney, I have, I have a few questions left, three of them. You have won the four major races in Ultra Trail. What could challenge you in the future? Is it to do more races in a close time period like you are doing with the Western and the Hard Rock combination? 
Yeah, maybe you should ask me that after a hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> we, we speak will, in three we, weeks. <laughs> yeah, we will find out how I feel about the close proximity of these races soon. Um, Is it a way to I'm challenge yourself? Yeah, I'm. I'm looking for more ways to challenge myself, more ways to get into that pain cave and expand it in new ways. And so um, basically... I think any and every idea sounds like a great idea. I don't have a specific list of races or challenges yet, though, that I'm looking at for the next few years. And do you consider maybe in the midterm or long term to try new experiences such as a mountaineering or a red adventure red or something like that with combined sports? Is it something that you could, you could look into? It's absolutely interesting. Katie Scheid and I were actually talking a lot about schemo when we were running together. And that seems like a cool sport to try and learn a little bit more about and see how I can do on skis sometime. But um, I love playing outdoors and, and being in the mountains and exploring and any sports that are related to that, I think are really intriguing and would love the chance to try stuff. This Western has validated the first part of your, of your goal in Western and Hard Rock sequence. How do you plan on best handling the three weeks separate, separating the two races? What do you have to do in between? What will you pay particular attention to? I am paying particular attention to signals that my body and brain are giving me. I'm not attached to any workout plan or training plan or Um, I have no idea how my legs are going to respond in this next couple weeks, but tuning in and making sure to pay attention to those signals is important, as well as making sure my brain is as rested and recharged as possible because going into that pain cave takes a lot of mental energy and I want that uh, mental energy to be ready to rumble again at Hard Rock. So mostly tuning in to signals and probably eating a lot of cheeseburgers and pizza <laughs> and ice cream. <laughs> Enjoying life and recording podcasts. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the best way life. to recover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Courtney, this is my last question for you. Will we have the pleasure of seeing you in Chamonix this summer to eat a pistachio ice cream or with a bib on your chest? <laughs> Possibly. I'm not ruling it out, but we will see after Hard Rock. Maybe both at the same time, eating a pistachio ice cream while running the UTMB. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, thank you very much for your precious time and our conversation. It was an honor for me and our listeners that we could organize this conversation. Before letting you go, I would like just to remind everyone that the Short Short Me by Salomu is now available everywhere and in two colors, uh, green and black. Thank you again for your time. I wish you a hard rock that goes beyond your expectations and you can be sure that we will follow you very closely. Thank you so much. See you uh, this summer, I hope. Yes, of course. I'll be in Chamonix. See you, Courtney. Thanks again. See you.